Amen. Grace and peace in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good morning. Welcome to Elevation United Methodist Church. Welcome to those of you worshiping here in the church house. Welcome to those of you worshiping at home. My name is Clay Parker. I'm the pastor here at Elevation. As you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, I don't know, my voice is a little hinky this morning. I've been battling sinus and allergies and a little cough, so we're praying that that all kind of stays at bay this morning, but uh, no screaming. Yeah, screaming for Duke last night, that's right, that's right, but, uh, but uh, hanging in there and glad to be here this morning and glad you all are here as well. Let's begin our time of worship together this morning with our call to worship. You'll find printed in your bulletin and printed on our screens. Come. Let us celebrate the forgiving, reconciling love of God. Know that God's love is lavished upon you forever. Come, let us celebrate and praise the God of love. Amen. And before we sing this morning, I do want to let you know that if you're visiting with us this morning, I invite you to fill out one of the visitor cards that you'll find uh, in front of you there in the pews and place that at the offering plate a little while later so that we can get back in touch with you and let you know how thankful we are that you're here this morning. So you'll notice a change in your bulletin. We're not going to sing our praise and worship song this morning just because I didn't think my voice could handle it, to be honest with you. And so we're going to sing a hymn that I'm sure many, many of us love. So our hymn of celebration, or hymn of praise, actually, this morning is The Church is One Foundation on page 545 and also on the screens.
Amen. Friends, let's invite, I invite you excuse me, to affirm our faith together this morning as we share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, I invite you to turn to your neighbor on your left and your right. Extend the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding. Peace of Christ to those of you worshiping at home. And young disciples, if you all will make your way up front. <coughs> hey, Claire. Hey, Annie. I love y'all's outfits. Those are very cool, very springy. <laughs> hey, Colin. Hey, Connor. <laughs> There's Skylar. Come on, Skylar. <laughs> Evan, you, you're going to be our greeter next Sunday. Yep. Hi. Just saying hey to everybody. I know, right? It's good to see you all this morning. Good morning. I see your poppet. That's very cool. Yeah. Hey, do you, do you have a fidget spinner anymore? Are they a thing anymore? You remember when they were a thing a few years back? You still got one? Yeah. I remember they were, that was the thing. You had to have a fidget spinner a couple of years ago. I have a You have one too? Yeah. Yeah. Those poppet things seem to be what, what's cool now though, right? Poppets. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, do me a favor, Mr. Peter, and uh, hit one more slide for me. Yeah, so you guys turn around, and you can see it up there, too. Um, can, somebody, can somebody who is, is pretty good at reading read that sign? You want to read it, Skylar? You want to read it? What does it say? Lost dog. Lost dog. Can you read the other part down there? Is that too far away? Can somebody, does somebody else want to read that? Do you want to read that? You don't want to read that last part? Do you want to read that bottom part? Can you see it? You see what does it say? Pearly white with one brown spot. Answers to Har Harvey. Call seven four four five five zero one two nine. Reward if found and return. Very nice. So that's that's Harvey. I don't know if Harvey was ever found. I hope he was because I just got that off the the internet. So hopefully Harvey was found, and and we will certainly pray that that was the case. But uh, do you see those signs up anymore? Yeah, a lot of times, yeah, that's cool. A lot of times we see them now on like Facebook and things like that, right? We've lost a dog. We share that, you know, can you, can you help find my dog, right? We're sad if our, if our dogs get lost, right? Good gracious. I can't even imagine thinking about little Baxter being lost out there somewhere and, and couldn't find him. That would oof, tear me up, right? I do have a dog. His name's Baxter. Yeah. He's cool. You got two dogs? Yeah, we love our dogs, don't we? Annie and Claire have two dogs, too. Yeah, we, we lose a dog, and boy, that just it, it messes us up, right? So what do you think God feels like when one of his children is lost? Have you ever thought about that? And what does it mean to be lost? What do you think it means to be lost? What does it mean to be lost, Skylin? Yeah, that's a good, that's, yeah, 
That's a good way to put it. You can't find God. You think God is hiding from you. You think God maybe is not where God should be. And that's not the case, right? Because it's, it's, we're the ones that get lost, right? Yeah. So this morning we're going to talk about a story called the, the parable of the prodigal son. The parable of the prodigal son. And there's actually two sons in, in the story, and we're going to talk about both of them in, in, our, um, in our older kids' uh, message. But for this morning, we want to focus on the, the one kid, the one son. He goes to his dad, and he says, Dad, I want you to give me all of my inheritance, all the money that, that you're going to give me when you die. But he's still alive, right? But I want you to go ahead and give it to me. Because I want it now, and I'm going to go off, and I'm going to do my own thing. I got it all figured out. And so what do you think his dad, what do you think his dad did? Do you think he gave him all the money? Yep, he did. That's right. He did. He gave it to him. He said, all right, son, here you go. Go. So what do you think the son did once he got all that money? What do you think he did? Yeah, Everett, he blew it. That's right. He blew it. Yeah. He, he wasted it, spent it on all kinds of crazy things. And then the, the Bible tells us that it got so bad that he went to work for this man feeding the pigs. And he was hanging out with the pigs. And the food that the pigs were eating looked good to him. And he was eating the same food that the pigs were eating. He had nothing. So then he thought, hang on one second. What's going on? Nothing. Yeah. And so then... He, he's sitting there laying with the pigs, and he says, you know what? These men that work for my dad back home, they've got it made. They at least have food, and they, you know, have a place to live. I, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to tell my dad, I'll just be one of your servants and, and work in the fields and help take care of the livestock. And at least that way I can eat and have a place to live. So he makes his way back home, and he goes down. He comes down the, like he's coming down. The aisle. Colin, you want to help me out real quick? Go, go down there to the end of the aisle. Quick, go, go. Run down there real quick. Real quick. Okay? And you're, going to be the, you're going to be the son, okay? All right. There goes, there goes Connor, too. Connor's coming, too. Got two sons. All right, Colin. So come on. You, you spent all your money. You're, you're sad. And so I'm going to be the dad. And so come to me. Come over here. Come over here. And instead, the dad, he doesn't even get a chance to say, Dad, I want to be your servant. I want to work in the, in the field. I didn't want to trip over anybody because what really happens in the story is the dad meets him halfway down the road and gives him a big hug and says, Oh, my goodness, my son is home. I thought he was lost, but now he's found, right? He welcomed him home just like everything was right back to normal, don't right? Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look now, don't look at you. That's right. All right. So let me ask you a question. In that story, does the father sound like somebody you know? Who does it sound like? Think big. Yeah, it's Jesus. It's God. That's right. Yeah. And we're, at one point or another in our lives, we're the son, right? We think we got it all figured out. We think we know everything that's going on. We're wasteful. We're sinful we do all these things we're not supposed to do and then there's God right with his arms open wide ready to welcome us back home that's a comforting thought right and as much happiness and rejoicing as the people did when they found old Harvey just think about the rejoicing that that God does when when one of his children that was lost comes back home and is found that's a cool thought isn't it I think it is, too. All right. Can we pray this morning? You want to pray? Okay, come on up here. Are you ready? Okay, dear, God, dear God. Thank you. Thank you. For loving us. For loving us. And for always. And for always. Welcoming us. Welcoming us. Home. Home. We love you. We love you. We praise you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, guys. You can go back to your seats now. <coughs> Colin, good job. Connor, good job, buddy. I appreciate y'all's help. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we 
are going, do we have any Jesus sightings this morning that you've seen during the week? Well, we have one Jesus sighting, and we decided we would share it this morning. <coughs> Reverend Chris West <coughs> was offered the job as communications director for Ardmore Baptist Church for the Cooperative Baptist Fellowship in North Carolina, and it's in Winston-Salem. So he has a new job. He will start when he comes... I believe I'm right. He starts when he comes back from his honeymoon. Yes. So he, that is our Jesus sighting this morning. Is there any more? <coughs> Do we have any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am, Miss Amy. Um, just please, please, please keep my mom in your prayer. She's struggling right now, and um, her, her grief is that she loves dearly is, is heading to the Lord. That's Amy's mother out at Meadowbrook, and her best friend, Will. Will, is heading home to be with Jesus. Yes, ma'am, Linda. The Rackley family lost their house to a fire last Wednesday, and a family members come back home from Poland, and so we just need a lot of prayers for that family as they rebuild. Any more prayer requests? We have one in the, uh, several in the book on uh, Judith Blackman, Connor Langley, or Laney. Patsy Morgan's sister and grandson is who those are. Do we have any across the way, Peter? Okay. Any more prayer requests, anyone? Okay, let us join the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts and with heavy hearts. Lord, you know the unspoken prayers, and you know the prayers are going, that are for the ones' names who were mentioned this morning. Lord, we thank you so very much for all of the special blessings that you give each and every one of us. And Lord, use us in your service. Bless our nation. Be with the people of Ukraine, Lord. We can only imagine what they are going through. And Lord, for all of the, our NATO countries who have offered Ukrainians a place of safety. And we are one of those nations too, Lord. Just be with all of us as we do your will and your service to help others. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I had to get unhung. Now let us worship with our tithes and our offerings.
Dear Father, you are so generous to us. And Lord, as we return a portion of this of our offering back into you, Lord, the blessings that you have given us. Lord, may they be used to spread your gospel throughout the world and to help here at home. Lord, we ask all of this in your name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, if you'll join me in the prayer, you can sit if you want to, it's fine. Join me in the prayer for illumination you'll find printed on the screen. Living God, help us so to hear your word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow your way in all faithfulness, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Amen. You may be seated. Our gospel lesson this morning is found in the gospel of Luke. While I grab my glasses. Luke chapter 15 verses 1 through 3 and then verses 11b through 32. Hear now the word of God. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has gotten him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, listen. For all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice. Because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on all of us gathered here, all of us worshiping at home. Empower the words of my mouth, the meditation of our collective hearts, so that together they might be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. For you, O Lord, are our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. The once ubiquitous all are welcome sign has become disdained in many church circles. It is not that the churches don't wish to welcome all people. The tension is between the desire and the execution. Churches often welcome all who fit in. In the light of the way we've always done it, though, clearly not all are welcome. What if the new vogue in church signs were, we see with Christ's eyes? This assertion indicates that the church takes Paul's words to the Corinthians seriously. Because of everything that has happened before, creation, covenant keeping, incarnation, resurrection, and the sustaining power of the Holy Spirit, this church sees all people through Christ-tinted glasses. So what I just shared with you was taken from the Disciplines Devotion book that the Upper Room publishes. It's the Sunday School curriculum that the Ronald Morgan class uses in their Sunday School class. It was this past Thursday's devotion. And while the accompanying text was from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 and 17, where Paul shares these words with the church in Corinth, from now on, therefore, regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And while this was the accompanying text for that devotion, I couldn't help but think that the sentiment shared by Julius Seymour, a Lutheran pastor in Montana, also applied to Luke's gospel text, where we read about an act of radical welcoming and an act of radical hospitality. And while we can tend to focus on the, the young prodigal being welcomed home by a loving father, it's important to remember that this parable is actually a tale of two sons. Now, when I was four years old, my dad took a break from his teaching career and moved us all to Chester, Virginia, a suburb of, of Richmond, to sell world book encyclopedias in the accompanying childcraft series of books. His college roommate was selling them, and he had coaxed dad up to Virginia with the the lure of, of better money, the opportunity for advancement in this company. Well, it turns out that the money wasn't that much better and the advancement never came. And after a year, we were back in Goldsboro and Dad had resumed his teaching career. But that didn't mean that the product wasn't sound. I'm sure many of you here had one or both of these sets and you still may have one or both of these sets in your home today. My favorite volume in the Childcraft set was one that included a section on fairy tales and fables. I remember my mom and dad reading The Three Billy Goats Gruff to me. A lot. You'll have to read it. Britannica.com tells us now that a fable is typically narrative in form, usually featuring animals that behave and speak as human beings told in order to highlight human follies and weaknesses. A moral or a lesson for behavior is woven into the story and often explicitly formulated at the end, right? The Boy Who Cried Wolf is another example of a fable. That was another one that was read to me quite a bit. Fables are stories. Fairy tales are fantasy. Contrast that to a parable, which is a succinct, didactic story in prose or verse that illustrates one or more instructive lessons or principles. It differs from a fable in that fables employ animals, plants, inanimate objects, or forces of nature as characters, whereas parables have human characters. Sons, fathers, servants. Now, we do have a couple of examples of talking animals in the Bible. The serpent 
in, in the Garden of Eden in Genesis and Balaam's donkey uh, in the book of Numbers. But Jesus, while he used animals in his parables, stayed away from actually having them talk. There are around 55 parables in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John's gospel contains zero parables. No parables. Luke's gospel boasts both the largest number, 24, as well as the most that are unique to his gospel alone, 18. The 15th chapter of Luke's gospel, which we just read from, contains three of Jesus' most beloved parables, and they all share a central theme. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the prodigal son all deal with the rejoicing that occurs when what was lost has been found. When what has gone astray has come home. One of the many reasons I love this parable so much is because all of us can relate at some point or another in our lives to both the older son and the younger son. At different points in our lives, many of us can be empathetic to what both sons are feeling. Following that line of thought, it's interesting that one of the commentaries that I consulted this week on Luke's text refers to this story as the parable of the prodigal sons. Both sons living freely and recklessly. Both sons being wastefully extravagant. Now, in that same commentary on Luke's gospel, Dr. Arlen Holtgren writes, the younger son asks his father for his share of what would eventually be his inheritance. That is remarkable, even shocking. Even if ancient law had provision for doing what the son wants his father to do, which is most unlikely from what we know, it is an affront to the father. In the ancient world, as today, an inheritance is received only at the death of the parent. Therefore, the son's request amounts to saying, Dad, I wish you were dead. If that doesn't make sense to you, if you can't wrap your head around a son or a daughter who would, who would do that, then maybe this might make more sense. God, I'm done with you. I'm taking what I have, what I've worked for, what I've earned, And I'm going off and I'm making my way in the world without your help. Without your freely given, recklessly shared, extravagant grace. I'll be just fine on my own. I've got a plan. And then when that way ultimately fails, you'll have the thoughts, much like the younger son has in our parable of being unworthy. You will go through a season of living with the pigs, whether literal or figurative. You will resign yourself to residing on the fringes of the kingdom. You will tell yourself that the sins you have committed are so egregious, so unforgivable, that there is no way that grace can find you in the dark hole you now reside in. You will tell yourself that there is no way that God, who you've mocked, who you've taken for granted, would ever welcome you back in the fold. No way that God would ever set a place for you at the table. Or what about the older brother? Maybe at times you can relate more to him the faithful brother who has always been by his father's side. The one who has gotten so accustomed to living that way that he too may have taken for granted the father's extravagant love. French priest and author Henry Nouwen writes in his book The Return of the Prodigal Son, a story of homecoming. There are many elder sons and elder daughters who are lost while still at home. 
And it is this lostness characterized by judgment and condemnation, anger and resentment, bitterness and jealousy that is so pernicious and so damaging to the human heart. Often we think about lostness in terms of actions that are quite visible. The lostness of the elder son is much harder to identify. A dark power erupts in him and boils to the surface. Suddenly, there becomes glaringly visible a resentful, proud, unkind, selfish person. Maybe this lostness caused by judgment and condemnation, anger and resentment, bitterness and jealousy made him think that he didn't need sweet grace any longer. He too, in his own way, is all right doing things on his own, in his own time. He too is okay living with the literal and the figurative pigs on the fringes of the kingdom. And make no mistake, he is not happy with the party being thrown for a wayward soul who has found his way home. Luke records as Jesus recounts the older brother saying, Look, these many years I have served you, never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But church, what if the verses that I just read sound more like this to you. Look, these many years I have been faithful to you and come to church and tried to serve you and the minute some lost soul walks through the front door, some sinner who has wasted your love and grace, I'm expected to hoot and holler and welcome them like they have been here for a hundred years? Well, no thank you. I'm not going to be a part of that celebration. In those moments, you too are wasteful. You too are reckless. You too are prodigal. But church, that's not the end of the sermon. Because here's the good news. If you can still hear my voice, if you can still hear God's voice, if you can still read the sacred text God shares with us and you've still got a heart that is beating, even if that heart feels broken, then you too can be restored back to the life that God intends for you. And when that restoration takes place in the kingdom of God, God rejoices. God celebrates. Think about a time you may have lost something, your keys or your wallet, a book, something, anything. You look and you look and you look, you can't find it. Maybe you stop and you pray for just a minute and, and the still small voice says, maybe you should look here. You look there and, and you find it. What do you do? Maybe you call your spouse or a a son or a daughter, do you say, hey, I found my wallet, I found my keys? But you don't call your neighbors. You don't say, hey, I'm getting ready to have a party because I found my wallet. Come on over, we're going to do some rejoicing this afternoon. Right? But that's what God does. God rejoices over what was once lost being found. God rejoices about one of God's own flock being restored back to their rightful place. I like to imagine God getting on the heavenly PA. Attention all angels, John has been found. Attention heavenly host, Jane has been found. We'll have a celebration beginning shortly. And then sometimes I think, how in the world does God rejoice at anything we do? The new and different ways that we as God's people find to do harm to each other have to cause God to grieve. You would think that God's heart would, would have to be hardened after a while. And yet fresh and new, each day, is God's mercy and grace. 
fresh and new each day is an opportunity for someone who is lost to be found. And fresh and new each day is an opportunity for the heavens to rejoice. Nowen shares this a little later in his writings. Will we understand the Father's joy? Will we let the Father embrace us? This is our resistance to living a joyful life. God rejoices, not because the problems of the world have been solved, not because all human pain and suffering have come to an end, nor because thousands of people have been converted and are now praising him for his goodness. No, God rejoices because one of his children who was lost has been found. It is God's joy, not the joy that the world offers. It is the joy that comes from seeing a child walk home amid all the destruction, devastation, and anguish of the world. It is a hidden joy. Friends, this morning and and every day, celebrate as God does when what was lost has been found. Celebrate. The joy that God feels, a joy that is far different and far greater than any joy that the world can share and celebrate. Celebrate that there will always be a place set at the table of grace for them and for you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, our hymn of celebration this morning Uh, we'll stand and sing that together. And while we're singing, the altar, your altar, is open for you to come and lament, pray, cry out, be still, be silent. There's comfort to be found at the foot of the cross. So let's stand and sing together our hymn of celebration, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, page 384, and also printed on the screen.
Amen. Friends, receive this benediction and this blessing. Go. Leave this place empowered by the grace and mercy of a Father who is always ready to welcome us home and share that love, that mercy, and that grace with everyone you meet. In the name of God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. We'll share a couple of brief announcements real quick. Brian, blessings to you and the good folks at Blackman's Grove. I want to remind everybody, and, and Eric is here, and he reminded me to, uh, to remind everybody that we'll, we'll have a, a brief time to, to come and help spruce up the parsonage um, on Saturday, this Saturday, April 2nd, uh, at 8.30. And so, won't be there but a couple hours, and so appreciate you all uh, uh, wanting to help out in that. Appreciate all the trustees and, and all that they are, are willing to do. And uh, Eric has, has asked if you all want to bring some pine straw, you're certainly more than welcome to do that. But uh, come and, and just be with us. We'll be a time of fellowshipping and being together, and uh, we'll enjoy our time together while we are doing that. Uh, upcoming with Pastor Clay, depending on how I feel, we might not have it tomorrow morning, but hopefully we will. I'll, I'll let everybody know, though, if we're, if we're not going to do that um, tomorrow morning. But that's 9 o'clock at Grill on the Hill uh, in Benson. Kingdom Kids and Mustard Seed Children's Choir, today is the day we all are going to start meeting on, sun, on today, which is Sunday, uh, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the Fellowship Hall. So um, I wanted to let you all know, because and, and Linda, I don't know if you saw my text last night, but I, I'm not going to be able to be there today. I wanted to come and talk to the parents and the grandparents and whoever else was there today. But I want to talk to everybody, so it's good that I can do this now. We're going to really need a, a rotation of folks to be able to, uh, to help teach and to lead the, the children, right? We don't want to put it all on, on one or, or two people to do that. So please be praying about whether or not you can help with, with sharing in a rotation. We've got two wonderful websites that can give you a lesson, lickety split, no problem. Um, Tara will be doing the choir most, most Sundays, and so it's really not rocket science, you know, getting something together and sharing it with the kids. It, it's all about the heart, all about the love that you want to share with our children. So please be praying about whether or not you can be a part of a rotation um, that will help with the, uh, the Kingdom Kids and, and the Mustard Seed Choir. Linda, do you want to add anything else to that? That's right. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Um, so please be praying about that. And what Linda said is key as well. You don't have to have a child or a grandchild um, to have a love for children and to have a heart for helping um, with this ministry. So please be praying about that, whether or not you would like to become a part of that rotation. And don't forget our Easter egg hunt is two weeks from today. <laughs> it's Palm Sunday, I know, right? Two weeks from today, uh, April 10th, we will worship at 930 then we will um, gather in the fellowship hall for story time with the children and some other uh, crafts, something along those lines, while the rest of us will go out and hide the Easter eggs, and then we'll have our Easter egg hunt, and then we'll return to the fellowship hall for a hot dog lunch. Um, and so this is, like Linda said last week, this is for everybody. This is not just for the children. This is not just for parents with children or grandparents. This is everybody is invited. And so um, invite children from our community uh, to come and be a part of this as well. And if you haven't signed up for a dessert yet, please either use the sign-up sheet on the bulletin board or see Linda and sign up for a dessert for our um, hot dog lunch that day. Um, our Linton study is continuing each Tuesday night at 6.30 in the fellowship hall now. We will gather. It's been a wonderful time uh, being together, listening to, to Jesus's words from the cross. So I invite you to join us Tuesday night at 6.30 for that. 
And then I won't, I won't go over them word by word, but you'll notice as well in the bulletin our Holy Week services, the schedule for those. So please pay attention um, to those. And be thinking about uh, Dallas and Nancy had mentioned to me last year, if you remember, we were um, barely out of it was a, a big deal to even have biscuits in the fellowship hall last year for for our uh, sunrise service so they had mentioned to me the possibility about doing a breakfast apparently we used to do a breakfast a bigger breakfast after that if that's something you all want to do um, please let me know get together with some folks that would like to pull that off and, and let me know and we could certainly do that one way or the other we will have something that morning after our sunrise service so be in prayer for that, how you want to, to go about um, doing that. Let me know, and let me know some people to reach out to. Let our nurture committee know some people to reach out to, and we'll, we'll do that. But you can see the schedule for our Holy Week services um, there in the bulletin as well. Any other announcements this morning that we want to share? All right, birthdays. Bill Ingram the second, March 28th. Hudson Beckers. April 1st, Mike Dixon, April 1st, and Jacob Lindsay, April 2nd. Still no anniversaries this week. Any birthdays that we missed that we need to... Okay. Trey Gay's birthday is April 1st. Let me find my pen. Hang on a minute. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. Any others? About any anniversaries that we might have missed. All right. Well, let me pray a blessing over our biscuits and our fellowship time together, and then you guys can head down there and, and enjoy that time together this morning. God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We give you thanks for the opportunities to praise you and to, to lift up your name above all other names, to hear your word. And now we ask your blessing on our time together in the fellowship hall. We ask your blessing on the food, the many hands that brought it to the table. We ask your blessing on the conversation, the spiritual nourishment that we will get. May both the physical nourishment and the spiritual nourishment guide us, strengthen us as we seek to be better disciples. We ask these things in Jesus' name and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And together, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. See you down there. <laughs>